Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about how vapor pressure changes as the temperature of the liquid changes. As we have specified in a previous video that how the intramolecular forces plays an important role in determining the vapor pressure of a particular liquid. So if you have molecules bound together with one another with stronger intramolecular forces, you will have low vapor pressure. However, you can you can break those intermolecular forces by actually increasing the temperature. So whenever the temperature increases, the kinetic energy of the molecules is also going to increase. And when the kinetic energy is increasing means they are moving faster. And in that particular case, more molecules will have enough energy to break those intermolecular forces. And if those intermolecular forces can be broken in the liquid phase, in that particular case, the molecule could escape. More molecules will escape in, uh, from the liquid surface onto the vapor phase. And as a result, your vapor pressure is going to increase. The vapor pressure has a directly direct relation with the temperature. As the temperature increases, the vapor pressure also increases to some extent. The quantitative relation between the vapor pressure and the temperature uh, can be measured by using Clay's Clapeyron equation. So in that particular equation, it relates the vapor pressure in the form of natural log P, which means the vapor pressure, with the temperature 1 over T. And the relation is going to be similar to a slope line equation. So in a slope line equation, you have Y equals mx plus b, where m is going to be your slope. And in this particular case, your slope is going to be negative delta h vaporization over r. And then obviously your b is going to be the y-intercept. So if I plot a graph where we, on the y-axis, we're going to have the natural log of vapor pressures and on the x-axis we're going to have 1 over the temperature. So the temperature here is going to be measured in Kelvin scale, so it's going to be 1 over uh, whatever the temperature is going to be in Kelvin scale. And then you will see, uh, once you get multiple uh, data points, at least three to four data points, and they may not be exactly on a linear line, but they are fairly close to one another where they almost make a straight line with a negative slope. And in this particular case, this slope can be used to figure out the value of a del delta H vaporization for a particular liquid. Because remember, the delta H vaporization is going to be different for different liquids based on the intermolecular forces. And it's going to be um, the transition between the liquids onto the vapor phase. So that's one equation that's usually uh, come along where you have to find, uh, they may give you enough information to plot the data or they may just give you the slope and using the slope you can figure out this delta H vaporization if you know the value of R. So if you recall, the value of R is just going to be the gas constant, which is, in this particular case, it's going to be 8.314 joules moles minus 1 Kelvin minus 1. Because remember, we're dealing with energy, so anytime you deal with energy, we're going to have 8.314 for the value of R. If you have two temperatures, the two temperatures and uh, the vapor pressures corresponding to those two temperatures can also be related using this equation, Clap Clasius Clapeyron equation. You could be asked anything in in that particular case. So suppose I have I'm given two temperatures and we'll call those T1 and T2, and very well you could be given the vapor pressures at those two temperatures where uh, P1 is going to be obviously corresponding to the T1 and your P2 is going to be corresponding to your uh, 
T2. And then in, if you given uh, both of those pressures in both of those uh, temperatures, you may very well be asked uh, the delta H of the vaporization, or you could be given, suppose, two temperatures, one pressure, and the delta H of vaporization, and could be asked to figure out what the delta, what the vapor pressure going to be at a different temperature. So technically, you have here five variables, so two vapor pressures, two temperatures, and one delta H of vaporization. So out of those five variables, you will be given four, and you'll have to figure out the fifth variable. And uh, once you know your knowns and your unknown, it's all about doing the math. So I'm going to take a couple of examples here and see how we're going to be using this particular equation to solve some of these problems. So suppose I got this question here that says at 267 a substance has a vapor pressure of 75.5 mm of mercury. Uh, you want to make sure you kind of relate the, the right temperature with the right pressure. So in this particular case, this 267 is going to be relating with 75.5 mm of mercury. So suppose if I call this 267 as my T1, that's going to be 267 Kelvin. And then your P1 in that particular case is going to be 75.5 mm of mercury. And the next part of the question says at 100 degrees Celsius. So you got to be careful with the units here. So now all of a sudden you are given the Celsius scale before you had the Kelvin scale. So you want to make sure you convert this temperature, which is going to be the T2 now, to a Kelvin scale. So it's going to be 273.15 plus 100. So that's 373.15 0.15 Kelvin, and then the vapor pressure is going to be 0.2 atmosphere. So that's going to be your P2, because remember, this particular vapor pressure, which is 0.2 atmosphere, is corresponding to 100 degrees Celsius. So in this particular case, you have 0.20 atmosphere, but then the pressure in the first set was given in mm of mercury. So you may want to convert either mm of mercury into the atmosphere or convert the atmosphere into the mm of mercury. Either way is fine. So let's go ahead and convert this second one, for example, into the mm of mercury. So remember, one atmosphere is 760 mm of mercury. And then we'll just do the math here it comes out to be 152 mm of mercury. So we can clearly see how when the temperature increases from 267 Kelvin to 373 Kelvin, your vapor pressure also has gone up from 75 mm of mercury to 152 mm of mercury. Now we got to calculate the heat of vaporization. So I'm just going to go back and copy that equation down here. And uh, we have pretty much everything except what we're lo really looking for here is the delta H of vaporization. So I can go ahead and uh, plug those numbers, those values in. So it's going to be the natural log of P2. All right, so your P2 is 152 divided by P1 is going to be 75.5, and that's going to be equal to negative delta H of vaporization divided by your R is going to be 8.314 joules moles minus 1 Kelvin minus 1 and then your temperature is going to be 1 over your T2 is 373.15 plus well not plus rather minus T1 1 over T1 which is going to be 267 Okay, so let's just do ha go ahead and do the math here. I'm just going to scroll this down a little bit. Okay, after plugging in natural log 152 over 75.5, I get 0.6997, and then negative delta H stays as it is for right now. Divide that by 8.314, and then 
1 over 373.15 minus 1 over 267 gives you minus 0 0.001065. And then after that, uh, just do the math however you want. You can go ahead and multiply 0 0.6997 times 8.314 and divide that whole number by 0 0.00165. So that comes out to be a delta H of 54.62 and that units at the end of the day is going to come out to be joules over mole because remember the temperature is going to cancel out because you got the temperature scale on the other side as well so this is going to be your final answer in this particular case so that's going to be the delta H of vaporization what about this next question here uh, it's going to be a good idea if you can pause the session and do this on your own and see if the answer matches with mine so I suppose uh, that you did pause the session and uh, calculated that on your own. And let's see if it matches with what I got here. So I'm told the normal boiling point and the heat of vaporization of ethanol is 78 and 43.5 kilojoules per mole respectively. So the delta H that we're given here is going to be 43.5 kilojoules over mole and you want to make sure you get rid of the kilo there so it's going to be 43,500 joules over mole and then we are told the normal boiling point so I'm going to call that uh, T1 so the T1 is going to be 78 degrees Celsius, and remember you got to add 273 to it. So when you add 273 to it, it's going to be 351 Kelvin. And then what's going to be the pressure at this particular point? So if uh, the boiling point is 78, at that particular boiling point, what's going to be the vapor pressure? Now, you're not really given the vapor pressure, and on the top of that, you're asked to calculate the vapor pressure at a different temperature, which is T2, that's 298. So you are decreasing the, vapor uh, decreasing the temperature there, so that means your P2 is going to be decreased at the end of the day. But then, before you actually get that, you got to figure out what the P1 is going to be. And here is a small trick here. If you're given the boiling point, what's going to be the vapor pressure at the boiling point, or especially at the normal boiling point? Remember, at uh, the definition of boiling point is at the boiling point, the atmospheric pressure is equal to the vapor pressure. So in this particular case, the P1 is going to be the same as your normal atmospheric pressure and what's the pressure normal pressure outside in the atmosphere well it's going to be one atmosphere or 760 mm of mercury whichever units you want to calculate that in uh, so that's the catch there so now you know everything except only one variable so all I really got to do is just uh, uh, bring that equation back so I can just go and copy this down and bring this equation all the way down here and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the numbers there but remember now in this particular case we're trying to figure out your P2 so I'm gonna kind of uh, make highlight that and then just go ahead and plug in the numbers now so natural log P2 leave that as it is your P1 is gonna be one atmosphere I'm just going to calculate that in atmosphere at the end of the day. The delta H that we have is 43,500, so it's going to be negative 43,500 divided by, so this is going to be in joules per mole, and then your R is going to be 8.314 joules, moles inverse, Kelvin inverse, and then either temperature is going to be, so 1 over your T2 that we have calculated was 298 and minus the T1 that I we have 
uh, taken was 351. So it doesn't necessarily have, the, your T2 doesn't necessarily have to be bigger than T1 always. It doesn't really matter whether you pick the lower temperature or the higher temperature as your T1 or T2, as long as you are consistent with Let's just kind of solve uh, what we have on the right side because it seems like we got all the variables on the right side. So it's going to be 1 over 298 minus 1 divided by 351. All right, so then multiply that by 43,500 and divide that by 8.314. So that comes out to be a negative 2.65. Now that's going to be the natural log of P2, you don't have to write 1 in the denominator. So your P2 here, how do you get rid of natural log? Well, you got to take uh, the base E, because that's the base you have for the natural log, and E to the power negative 2.65. That's going to be 0 0.0706 atmosphere. So that's how your vapor pressure is going to change when the temperature is decreased from 78 degrees Celsius or 351 Kelvin to 295 Kelvin. So obviously the, if you're decreasing the temperature, vapor pressure should decrease and that's exactly what happened and it went down from one atmosphere all the way to 0 0.0706 atmosphere.